Do you ever scratch your head in amazement when seeing birds in winter, wondering how it is that they manage? If you do, these two birds, Anna's hummingbird and the golden-crowned kinglet, will really make you wonder. Both are very small, and if there's anything we know about small animals, they have to work much harder to survive in winter, because they lose heat at a much quicker rate than larger animals. And yet, these two species have an amazing ability to survive in cold climates. But which one is truly the champion? Let's take a look at what both species have to do over winter to beat the odds. First up, weighing in at a whopping 5 to 5.5 five grams, nearly equivalent to the weight of two pennies, is one of our tiniest northern birds, the golden-crowned kinglet, which, if I'm not mistaken, is pretty much the same bird as Europe's gold crest. Unlike other small birds like chickadees, golden-crowned kinglets do not switch their diet over to mainly seeds and fruit in winter. They do not cache food away and fall for winter feeding, and unlike most insect-eating birds, they don't head for a tropical paradise. Well, some of the population do, but not all. They live year-round as far north as Alaska. Other than having super thick plumage, 80% of which is used for insulating the bird, these guys don't do much winter preparation. In fact, the real winter preparation they do takes place in spring, producing many offspring during nesting to compensate for the death toll that will occur in winter. It's pretty sad. Despite everything that is working against them though, these kinglets somehow make it. In temperatures as low as minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around minus 30 degrees Celsius, they maintain their body temperature near 111 degrees Fahrenheit, or 40 degrees Celsius. In order to maintain this, they need to eat three times their body weight in insects every single day. But what insects? I mean, we're talking about winter here. There are no insects. Well, that's not entirely the case. They are still present, but not as many as in summer. The one thing monumental to their survival is a tiny inchworm caterpillar that blends into the twigs of fir and spruce trees, where they stay in a hibernated state for winter. That is, of course, if a highly skilled small predator doesn't spot them with their very good vision, the golden-crowned kinglet. From research, it was discovered that this insect, along with others, they find are what fuels them. Only thing, though, they have to be constantly finding these tiny worms. Going just two hours during the day in winter without food is fatal. This is why these kinglets are such active little creatures. They never stop moving or searching for food for more than two seconds at a time over a winter day. Luckily, these birds are highly social, hanging out with at least a couple of buddies. This means more eyes on lookout for much needed food to pack on the fat. They are always vocalizing to one another about food sources. Speaking of fat, they can put on a lot and very quickly. At 8 a.m., they start out with around 0.25 grams, and by 5 p.m., they're up 0.60 grams. That's like a person gaining 35 pounds in fat in one day. As the daylight dwindles and the blackness comes in, the kinglets get through the foodless long hours ahead by using these energy reserves to shiver the night away in an effort to generate heat and keep from freezing. On really cold nights, especially in Alaska, where it can get down to 40 below zero, the fat reserves alone may not be enough. Someone warm and cuddly to snuggle with may be needed, and that's just what one researcher discovered in Alaska several years ago. He observed three kinglets head up into a spruce at dusk. After waiting some time, he went up to check on them and found all three huddled together under the bough right up against the base of the tree. One of the birds turned its head to look at him, suggesting that it wasn't using torpor, a kind of hibernated state where the bodily functions are reduced down significantly to conserve energy. Instead, it seemed that they were using the fat they acquired throughout the day along with each other's warmth to keep from freezing. So, golden crown kinglets literally use one another's warmth to make it through the cold darkness. It's nice to have good buddies. Not only at night, though. As I mentioned earlier, these guys stay in constant vocal contact so that they don't separate. And while foraging throughout the day, they even communicate to one another when they found potential good places to sleep. It's not left up to the end of the day to find a roosting spot. As the daylight fades, one last call is made to group everyone together. These kinglets need one another in order to make it, an example of what can be achieved when we work together. 
It seems to me that the Golden Crown Kinglet is truly a hardy winter survivalist. But will Anna's Hummingbird give them a run for their money? Weighing in at a whopping 4 to 4.5 grams, no heavier than a nickel, this is the only hummingbird to dare stay the winter on the Pacific coast, even as far north as British Columbia, Canada. Just like the Golden Crown Kinglet, the small size of Anna's Hummingbird makes it a challenge to retain heat, due to its high surface to volume ratio. Unlike the kinglets, these birds have only been overwintering at northern locations the last several decades. It seems that a change in landscape from humans could be a reason why they have been staying further north. One tree with nectar-rich flowers called blue gum blooms in the winter. Curiously, though, this tree is not found in Oregon and Washington, areas where these hummingbirds winter as well. It seems that part of the answer for why they remain in those areas are hummingbird feeders. More and more people put out nectar feeders, and this provides the Annas with a super-rich food source. The other part of the answer is the growth of urban areas in the Pacific Northwest. Many flowers have replaced coniferous forests with diverse gardens, such as winter jasmine, witch hazel, sweet box, Oregon grape, and heather. Many of these bloom earlier or later than native flowers, therefore providing a longer period of time for the Anna's hummingbird to feed on plant nectar. Due to having a very high metabolism, the highest of any endothermic animal here on this planet, hummingbirds need to eat from high sugar plant sources. Every day, they can consume half their weight in pure sugar. Under normal circumstances, all hummingbirds are always just a few hours away from starvation, so in winter, the stakes are even higher. On a typical winter's day, an Anna's may lap up sugar all throughout the daylight hours while slowly turning it into fat as much as 16% of its body weight. This extra weight will help fuel them through the night, as they burn it all off over the cold hours of darkness to keep from freezing. To get the most out of their fat reserves, Anna's hummingbird has to go into torpor. While in this energy-conserving state, they can drop their body temperature from around 40 degrees Celsius to nearly 9 degrees Celsius, or from 104 degrees Fahrenheit down to 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Their respiration rate is reduced from 245 breaths a minute to 6. Incredibly, they can also suspend breathing for up to 5 minutes. During torpor, their metabolic rate can be 300 times lower than when in flight. Huge savings like this can help them through severe periods of weather. This torpid state is so critical to these birds that if it's really cold, the Anna's hummingbird will slip into torpor during the day. This brings me back to the nectar feeders. If you're going to have a feeder out in winter for them, you need to commit to this. That means maintaining clean feeders, so it's a good idea to have extra nectar feeders so that while you're cleaning one, you can put out the other. And you also have to keep it going the entirety of the season because they will be depending on it. Just something to take note of for people in the West who have Anna's over winter. Another thing that Anna's hummingbird can do over winter is switch their diets to eat more insects especially when there isn't sufficient nectar available. Some days may be better than others, though. There's a lot going against them during this season. It's just amazing that a bird which should be in the tropics has been staying further north in winter. Luckily, winters can be mild, and with the help of humans, they have a shot at making it. Once spring arrives, the ones that brave the cold days to the end have first dibs on breeding territories and can get straight to work before the other hummingbirds have even arrived. That's one of the advantages to this hummingbird for overwintering in the north. So, who is the true winter warrior? Golden Crown Kinglet or Anna's Hummingbird? Well, the Golden Crown Kinglet don't rely on feeders from humans. They aren't really known to use torpor, although that doesn't mean that they don't. And they seem to be really resourceful, finding insects during a time that is quite difficult. On the other hand, they have been living north for many, many years, allowing much time to adapt to colder, foodless climates. They also have a thick coat of feathers to help keep them insulated. And as though they have only been staying north in winter recently, so this is new to the species and yet they make it. Unlike the golden Crown kinglet, they don't have buddies to snuggle with overnight, but they will probably always need the help of humans, be that with nectar feeders or plants that bloom in winter. They also don't survive in places as extreme as the Golden Crown Kinglet, such as Alaska. Although some do make it pretty close, but it's rare. So what do you think? Who is the true winter survivalist here? 
Regardless of who you pick, they are both exceptional. That can't be taken from either of them. Just like it can't be taken from these incredible winter survivors, which you can get familiar with and their remarkable abilities in this video on six different tough winter birds. Thanks for watching. Happy birding. The plumage of Canada jays is so effective at keeping them warm that they will breed in February and March when conditions are still quite frosty. That's how tough they are.